This is the NextGen air traffic control display prototype. This is a MITRE internal sponsored research project that's focusing on the way the air traffic controller's role is going to change as we head towards NextGen. As we move toward NextGen, uh, one of the things we expect is an increase uh, in air traffic demands. Now, one of the key components, human components, of the airspace system is the air traffic controller. Uh, in today's world, in today's environment, the air traffic controller performs a, a fairly manual task. Um, and so as we move toward next gen, there are a number of initiatives, both government and in private industry, that are trying to develop uh, automated systems, automated decision support systems, to help the controller uh, continue to safely uh, and efficiently manage the airspace. Um, the, the point of this effort, or the thrust of this effort, is to develop a paradigm of controller automation interaction that maximizes the capabilities and the benefits of automation while taking advantage of the, the knowledge and the skills of the human controller. The prototype contains two different displays, a primary and a secondary display. The primary display is similar to a surveillance display that a controller might use today. And the secondary display is basically a sandbox where the controller can play out different scenarios and look into the future. So there are a number of different components to the prototype. And I'm going to start with the automation timeline. So the automation timeline uh, is basically a window into what the automation is thinking at any given time. As the automation generates solutions, those solutions pop up on the timeline as bars. The color of the bar indicates the priority of that particular solution and the length of the bar indicates how long that solution is going to take to play out. When the controller sees a new solution on the timeline, they can click on that solution, which pulls it up in the secondary display. Once it's in the secondary display, the controller can scroll forward and backwards on the timeline for that solution to see not only how the particular aircraft in the solution interact, but also the impact of the solution on the airspace at large. Additionally, the controller can see each individual vectoring command that's been suggested by the automation. The controller can drill down on those particular vectoring commands, which pulls up an information window that shows more detail. In addition, the controller can move the airspace in three dimensions, which in some solutions might provide additional insights. The controller can also click on alternative solutions, and they can evaluate those different solutions using a visualization that we've created that represents high-level information about the solutions, for example, fuel, noise, or the impact on schedule. One of the last features that I want to point out on the display uh, is based on a key assumption that we have, which is that sometimes a controller may have information that the automation doesn't have access to. So an example of this might be the pilot might call down and say, I've got icing in this environment. Uh, at which point, the controller can select one of the direct annotation tools, for example, an airspace restriction tool, and draw that restriction directly into the airspace. Once the controller checks that information in, now the automation can generate new solutions which the controller can evaluate. A second example might be if a pilot calls and say they have an emergency on board. Uh, in that case, the controller can choose one of the one of the other direct annotation tools and actually draw a path for the aircraft to travel, perhaps directly to the airport. We just saw an air traffic control environment where the controller assumes uh, much more of a supervisory role. So rather than manually communicating with aircraft and managing them manually, uh, the controller is actually interacting, collaborating really with an automated agent uh, to manage traffic. Now, to arrive at this concept um, of, of controller automation interaction, uh, what we are trying to mimic is basically the conversation that two humans might have. Except, you know, rather than two humans or two controllers, it's a controller and an automated agent. So, to try to achieve this, this design philosophy, uh, we followed three principles. Uh, the first uh, is basically designing automation that is transparent. Uh, so the idea here is that transparent automation uh, allows the human to get an idea of what the automation is thinking and why it's thinking about it a certain way. 
So uh, different key, uh, key features of the, of the prototype exemplify that. Uh, for example, the whole secondary display is really meant to help the controller get an idea uh, or get an insight into what the automation is thinking. Um, now, while we wanted to make the automation's thought process transparent, uh, we also didn't want to overwhelm the controller with lots of, of, of information. So the, the second guideline, the second design guideline was uh, to basically only uh, introduce the right amount of information. So we were actually very, very uh, uh, critical of each piece of information that we were putting in the, in the prototype and, and really making sure that it was going to be useful for the task at hand. Um, uh, the third component deals more with the, the, the user experience in terms of the input um, uh, interface and, and we really wanted to have a, uh, an environment of direct manipulation and that's uh, we feel something that gives the controller or, or the human uh, better engagement in the task and that they're able to actually you know um, directly interact with it. Um, so as we move forward, uh, one of the key uh, uh, activities that we still have to, to go through is uh, a human in the loop simulation to try to gather metrics like the uh, workload is in situational awareness um, uh, impact that this concept may have on, on the controller as they try to manage traffic. Um, and, and we also have to make sure as we go forward that we continue to be aligned uh, with next-gen concepts of operations that come out of the government or uh, industry groups uh, so that we can basically take uh, those types of uh, initiatives that are being talked about and, and find a way to um, integrate them into what we believe is, is a very intuitive uh, human automation interaction uh, environment.